Welcome back for another episode of the Fitness Remodel Podcast. If you're new here, my name is Daniel Rubin. I'm a medical student and fitness coach in Chicago, and this channel is all about providing you with the information and the strategies you need to build a healthy and sustainable relationship with fitness. Today's guest is a good friend of mine who I've known for many years, Nate Green. Nate is a personal trainer for the company Fitness Friend Wellness, which is a very unique coaching business in that you can hire a personal trainer to come to your house with equipment and train you in your own home without ever having to step foot in the gym. Before coaching, Nate also had a very impressive baseball career where he got to play collegiate ball at the University of Hawaii at Hilo and then professionally in both Australia and Sweden. In this conversation, Nate and I discussed the advantages of getting personal training at home, how he designs workouts differently for different clientele, how Nate balances his own fitness with such a busy schedule and much more. Nate is an awesome dude with a very well-rounded perspective of fitness, so I really hope you all enjoy episode six of the Fitness Remodel podcast, what it's like to train at home with Nate Green. All right, Nate, how's it going, man? Good, man. How you doing? Good, good. So I'm I'm really excited that uh, we were able to set this up because, well, I've known you for a long time, since like fifth or sixth grade for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you have a really cool and impressive athletic background. I know you have a very unique job in the fitness industry right now. And this podcast is all about trying to give people good information about um, different opportunities in fitness so that people can start a fitness practice with a good mindset. So I figured right you'd be like the perfect guy to talk to about that. Heck yeah, man. Awesome. Real fast. Before we start, I have known you since you're a, a baby in, in diapers. <laughs> um, do, do you go by Dan on the podcast? Daniel? Dan the uh, man? What's the deal here? I, Yeah, Dan or Daniel usually. Dan? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, right. <laughs> I know you've always called me Dan. So, um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, before we get into all the, I guess, nitty gritty about fitness and whatnot, let's just kind of go through your athletic background a little bit. Um, how you kind of got into fitness and, and a little bit about generally what you currently do, um, as a coach. Yeah, right on, right on. So, uh, I guess it all started, I started, exercising super young um like my dad wouldn't let me work out back in the day like when i was like you know 12 13 like just wouldn't let me work out so i'd be doing like push-ups and sit-ups and stuff and like i always just loved fitness in that aspect i liked how it made me feel i liked being like just like kind of stronger than the other people so um that's kind of how i first got into it but then eighth grade year i really started to like lift weights and i was playing football um, and again, I, I was five foot 11 as a eighth grader. I mean, I haven't grown an inch since, but you know, I just, I, I hit my peak right then and I was working out. So I was stronger than a lot of the people. I was taller than a lot of people. And uh, I just liked how that made me feel. Um, I wasn't getting hurt very often because like, I, I just felt like since how I was working out, I had a bunch of awesome, like great mentors that like. I would go work out at literally like 5 a.m. as an eighth grader and go like up to the high school and work out with like the football team, like the high school football team. And uh, it just really got me into like wanting to lift weights. And then I would say it wasn't until I was in college. Um, So I played played baseball, football in high school, um, ended up getting a couple of concussions. So I was done with football and then baseball wise. Um, I played baseball all through high school and I figured that was what I was going to go to college for. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I just, did you go, I know you went to Hawaii, University of Hawaii, Hilo, Hilo. starting college or did you play? So I went to Jeffco for two years. So Jefferson college, it's in Hillsboro, Missouri. It's a Juco, uh, but we were good. We were raw. So we were very good. Uh, again, we'd wake up at five 30 every day, go work out and, Kind of when I was there, I started to explore more of just like the, I was working out like a football player yeah. my entire high school career. So I was just chonky um, and I needed to throw a baseball and swing a bat. So right. um, I started to explore other avenues because pitchers, they have the most, just the wildest, um, like a lot, the best pitchers, they work out hard. They go hard in the gym. Yeah. They lift heavy weights. So anyone that yeah. tells you otherwise, like they when- when Get I was yeah, when I was coaching um, in undergrad, I I got to train a few baseball players. Um, Sweet. And I, I even trained a a whole team for a, an off season, but 
Um, I was, you know, not to throw shade at, at baseball or anything, but <laughs> I was shocked at how, you know, athletic and strong these yeah. baseball players were. They were some of the most impressive athletes in the gym that I yeah. even got to work with. So, so yeah, no, I, I definitely believe that a pitcher has a pretty um, intense training regimen. Heck yeah. So I think baseball takes a lot of self-discipline because let's be honest, you're standing around a lot in baseball, you know? So first of all, to play the game itself, especially at a high level, like you have to be self-motivated to do that because you're standing around a lot, you know? And I know you're always involved in plays and stuff, but uh, so I think that's why there are some baseball players work out really hard because they have that self-motivation and uh yeah. 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 So then you, uh, there's so many baseball players in the U S like there are hundreds yeah. of thousands, millions, I'm sure. So you yeah. just have to do that little thing that like separates you from the rest. So that was working out for me and then learning different ways of working out. And then, yeah, you know. I'd say it worked out pretty well for you. So you got to play in college, you got to experience Hawaii. And then after that, I know you played professional overseas in yep. Sweden and Australia. Austra that yes, that is correct. Yeah. So um, right after college, I went to Australia. I played over there. I played in Perth and it was amazing. I got to meet so many different people. Um, like a certain amount of Americans can play on each team. So it's like a bigger deal to like be like the American on like mm -hmm. the team there. So it was really fun. I got to meet so many great people. Um, I made so many connections also. So um, one of the connections I made there allowed me to go play in Sweden the following year. And while I was in Sweden, um, I played, I also like uh, went to elementary schools and like I'd help like teach about baseball and like just English in general. And Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's a little sweet. And then I was supposed to go to Switzerland, but um, because COVID, the borders got shut down literally like three or four days before I left. So it was. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was, um, was I guess like the off field, the in the gym training, similar, different, harder, less hard overseas in, in these other countries compared to how it is here training for baseball in the States? Um, so I would say they didn't go as hard just because they didn't have a million other baseball players pushing them. Like, like if you want to push yourself, like you want to play college baseball, you have to do something that those high school baseball players aren't doing. If you yeah. want to play pro ball, you have to do something that sets yourself apart from the college guys. So in Australia and Sweden and just all a bunch of other countries over the, uh, across the world, they don't have those guys pushing you. So that it's just a little different. I mean, baseball also obviously isn't as large in Australia, stuff like that. So it's just looked at a little differently, but uh, yeah, so it, it, it was different, but I mean, the other American, they would, they would help push you. And I learned so many different types of workouts too. Like, yeah, just, yeah, it, it was amazing. And then oh, I bet. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm always sure just adding stuff to my repertoire, just, just to have it in the back of my head. Yeah, no, I'm, and I'm sure it serves you pretty well because, um, yeah, you have a pretty unique job now. So um, you're you're a personal trainer, but you're in house. So you travel to people's yes. homes and train them, and you yes. kind of have to work with whatever they have at their place. Yep, exactly. So yeah, what, what what's that like? Is do do most of your clients have equipment? Um, yeah, so I would say most of my clients have home gyms, but um, I let's just say like I don't want to say how many clients that, but let's just say like. 20% of my clients though, don't have much stuff at all. So I have to bring everything into there. Like I have adjustable dumbbells up to fifties. I have the bench. I have every kettlebell you can think of. I have the different like stability balls. I have uh, medicine balls, all that fits in my Jeep. So I literally, I'll, wow. some, for some clients, I'll take two, three, like trips back, like inside, outside. But um, I've noticed by training at home, I've had so many less cancels from people because instead of having to drive 20 minutes to the gym, they have to walk 12 seconds out to their yeah. living room or something like that. So it's really unique. I didn't even know that this was a thing until about a year ago. I mean, I knew it was a thing, but, um, yeah. So I, I yeah, I was going to say, you know, the, the main thing that really wanted, you know, me to get you on this and, and talk about what you do is because, um, you know, I was a coach for, uh, four years and then the last time we got to see each other in person you told me about what you do and I'd never even heard of that um, yeah so, you know I figured it'd be a good opportunity like you said you get less cancels um, if mm -hmm. someone's considering starting a fitness practice um, and they're thinking about hiring a trainer most people just go right to a gym 
ask mm-hmm. to meet with a trainer and hire them. So um, I don't think a lot of people know that this is an option. How how do you guys like get the word out there? How do you find clients and connect with people? Yeah, so a different a uh, couple different ways. The big one is like Google Ads. So like when someone types in like hey, I want a personal trainer, like we'll pop up on there. So, but another huge one is word of mouth. So um, we've gotten into a few country clubs, like the one of the most prestigious country clubs in Missouri, like we're the in-home trainers there. So we started off just doing at-home stuff. Now we're in a really nice apartment complex. We're in um, a really nice country club. So it's just word of mouth. And how it started was, one of our trainers was training a client that went to that country club. Well, after a while, she's like, Hey, like my country club has like a gym. Do you just want to train up there? And then like one person sees us training up there, they tell their friends. So networking and word of mouth is the absolute biggest, but then, I mean, you're always going to have those people that look up online that say like, Hey, I need personal training, but I don't want to go to a gym. And there's so many reasons people don't want to go to the gym. Like, One, because when COVID was happening, like people just want to stay quarantined or not go out in front of a million people. Um, They could be self-conscious about either their weight or like not knowing how to work out. Or some people just don't have the time. Like I train during like the middle of the day. I train so many business people that work from home and they don't have time to go to the gym, but they're like, hey, I can get an hour workout in if you come to me. So it's that there's such a market for it. And there's, there's just not a shortage of people that would like that. They just don't know that that's an option. So, and I mean, you have to blast it everywhere too. So, I mean, we blast, uh, we do pretty good with our Instagram, uh, like our Facebook. Uh, We just hired one of our trainers. She runs our Instagram account. So like every single day she's pumping out content, but uh, I would honestly say the biggest thing is word of mouth, but I mean, just advertising, wherever you can but yeah uh, word of mouth is what really made it start rolling like i got us into this apartment complex and it's just because i had a friend that was like hey i heard you're like a trainer like my dad's friends girlfriends sex sex blah 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 blah, yeah wants to train so i go up there and then all of a sudden people start seeing me train up there and then you you just had to be approachable too and like you have to be ready to talk to people so i think that a lot of this job training people isn't necessarily like putting through these people or putting them through the best workout. It is putting them through the best workout. Like you need to be able to do that, obviously, but it's able to like being able to like engage them. And when like the people would come up and talk to me at the apartment complex, I'm telling that like off the bat, I'm trying to like show them that like I can be like engaging and I'm like open and stuff. Like no one wants, some clients I have three times a week. Um, no one wants to, to talk about personal training for three hours when they're training crazy. Like I just, yeah, yeah, no, I get yeah, it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm for saying? For sure. For sure. I, I was going to ask like you, when you're first meeting a client for the first time, um, how much do you know about the equipment? I know you have your own equipment um, that you say you bring to your clients, but um, do you know a lot about, what equipment they already have and then do you have to kind of adapt your workouts on the fly are you able to plan full workouts or is it kind of you you freestyle it uh as you go Uh, so no the first meeting is a little bit harder because i ask them what equipment they have and if someone's like yeah i have a bunch of bands like that could mean they have 50 bands of every single size or they have like three bands from 35 years ago that like just are about to snap so yeah Um, I mean, I typically the first session, I'll try not to use their equipment as much just because I like to have a written down Mm -hmm. plan for us to do, but also I can't think of it. Like I can't really make a workout until I do talk with them and like figure out their goals and stuff. But, uh, yeah, a a lot of times I have them send me pictures and stuff. If they have a home gym, I have them send me pictures or if they have nothing, I just haven't, they're just like, yeah, I have nothing. Then. Um, the best part about working out at like someone's home is the fact that you don't have to like be like do stuff on the fly. Um, if you're at the gym and there's 350 people in the gym, you know, someone might be on this machine. Someone might be on this machine. You're like, Oh my gosh, that was my workout. So what am I supposed to do now? 
if you're working out at home, you never have to deal with that because no one else is on your machines. So yeah. the only time you ever have to really change is like someone's like, ah, like this like hurts my shoulder or something. So like, okay, let's do something that like takes some pressure off the shoulder, but still works that muscle. So yeah. yeah. That's actually really interesting. I yeah, no, I, I definitely can relate to the frustration of having to adjust your workout in a big commercial gym. So when I was training people, um, I was mainly in like a, a private gym. Like if, if you're working out there, like you're working with a coach kind of deal. And yeah. if you're doing a one-on-one session, you have priority. So if there's a class also going on, like you get to take all your equipment, you'll always do what you have written down. Nice. Uh, but we were technically a department of a big commercial gym. And I had one client who really wanted to work out, you know, up, upstairs in the big commercial gym. Uh-huh. And it was like a four or four thirty on like Monday, Wednesday, oh. Friday when it's completely packed. And, you know, we, we trained there for like two weeks and we never got through a single workout that I had actually written for them. Oh. And, and it really just kind of became, you know, looking around, oh, I see this machine is open. Let's snag it. And, you know, yeah. it's, it's not really even the same muscle group that I had originally planned. Yeah. So eventually I talked him into going back down to the, the <laughs> private area, but um, yeah, I guess that, that does make more sense that if you're training people in home, um, you'll never have to work around anyone, which is a huge advantage. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah. Dang. Um, do you do a lot of body weight stuff then? Cause I, I know you said you have dumbbells, some kettlebells, but um, you know, a, a lot of trainers, it, it's kind of easy to base a program around the barbell lifts, right? You know, uh-huh. uh, squats, um, deadlifts, things like that. But mm-hmm. uh, unless one of your clients has a barbell or you're working in a country club or apartment gym that has barbells, which I would imagine is pretty rare to have uh-huh. like an apartment gym. Um, do you do a lot of body weight things or just more variety? How do you work? Um, it depends. So it depends what the client needs. So Um, I have one guy, he's just a skinny dude and he just needs to put on some weight. So I do heavy weights with him. So, um, I'll bring the fit. I mean, so I'll bring in like the 50 pound dumbbells. Like I have adjustable ones and they go up to like 50. So we'll do like heavy bench with him. Uh, we'll hit back heavy. So he does heavy weights, but then, um, honestly, I try not to do a ton of body weight stuff. So I like lifting weights. I mean, yeah. I'm a big proponent on no matter who you are, like, it'll be good to put some like strength on you, you know? So I have one, um, one of my clients, uh, I I know we'll get into what what the types of clients and everything that I have, but uh, I have one lady that uh, she just had a stroke and I give her weights too, because like during a stroke, like one part of your body can like shut down and, in order for her to like move her arm or something like that, I just took her back as strong as hell now because we've just been doing body weight, body weight. So like if she needs to move her arm, she uses those back muscles to help move that arm and stuff. So I really see almost anyone working out can really benefit from using weights for rather sure. than body yeah. weight. But yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, like if they're if they're hiring a trainer to come in their house, um, you know, people can do push ups on their on their own. People can yeah, do yeah. air squats on their own. Um, exactly. So it would make sense that, you know, I, I guess your clients would probably prefer using your weights, things like that. Yeah, 100%. definitely. hundred yeah. percent. Now, don't get me wrong. So uh, one of my clients, he, his knees always bugging him. So then that day we'll, we'll be doing body weight stuff. Uh, so again, I switch it based on his needs that day and like what his goals are, but uh, yeah, I, I try to do a lot of weights for a lot of people because I mean, some of these people that call me to like come in, train them, they have been doing body weight for so long and they don't realize the benefits of like really growing muscle and just getting stronger because a lot of my clients, they had back problems. Like, or just when you get older, you just get back problems and I strengthened their core. I strengthened some of those smaller muscles in that back. And like that, it's just made a world of difference for them. And they didn't realize they just think that, Oh, if I lose weight, it'll be easier on my body. Well, also, if you get stronger in that core yeah. and everything, you're going to help protect that back. It's a so. double-edged sword there for, for sure. Exactly. I, I, I do want to learn more about your clientele because, um, yeah, I guess uh, I guess you're probably working mostly with adults 
Is that is that right? Any kids, it's youth athletes, or everything? Yeah, so it's everything. Um, really? I used to train. Uh, there's a baseball organization up here uh, by me, and I would teach. Um, I would do like a like six week course, and it would just be like speed and agility. And then I'd also do like for 30 minutes would be doing speed and agility. 30 minutes would be like doing weight training. Um, and those are like high school athletes. And then I also have like a few professional like MLB players. I have um, a couple professional wakeboarders. I have a bunch of retired people that just like playing golf every single day. I have um, a few people that are just trying to lose weight that are younger um, so I literally, I'm all over the board. There's, there's wow, not, a, I did not know it was yeah, wide of a variety. Um, it, it makes my day go by so much faster also, because my first two clients of the day could be like based MLB guys. And then I'll go to a lady that's had some medical problems. That's a little bit older. And then I'll go to someone that is like 18 years old, trying to lose some weight. And then I'll finish off the day with like, my pro wakeboarders so i i love wow. it it makes the day go by and how, it's how many fun. how many total clients do you have so i th- if i had a full schedule and no one canceled i would have in one week i'd have 27 sessions dang yeah they, yeah so one hour? yeah they're all one hour okay yep. Yeah, it's uh, oh, I love it so much too. It's, yeah, and then that's that's also you know you got to factor in the the travel time because you're going exactly to all these different locations. Yeah, if I train five people in a day, it's not a five hour day. That that's closer to like a seven eight hour day. Dang, how yeah. how far is your longest drive? My longest drive is it's like thirty minutes. But how I set up my schedule is. I was fortunate enough to like have my schedule fill up to where I could be like, okay, like I'm not going to take this client because they're 45 minutes from me. So I literally, I'll drive out, like I'll hit someone like 10 minutes from my house. Then I'll hit someone like five minutes from them. Then I'll hit like someone five minutes from them and then drive back like 20 minutes, hit someone and then come home. So like I'm literally setting up my schedule just where it's like a big circle. I don't have to like yeah. drive all over. Like I have to drive a ton, but that's just the job. And I mean, For sure. it's so exciting. I've never woken up and be like, God, I got to work today. This is awful. Like, yeah, I've been tired and I've been like, I don't want to do anything, but I've never been upset that I have to like go work. Like I, I love what I do. Is it, is it hard scheduling that? Because I, I feel like that's, you know, obviously the smartest way to do it just to, uh-huh make make it make sense you're you're yeah getting a few clients in a row that live near each other um yes. instead of going in a zigzag but yeah that hard to coordinate with all of your yeah clients? oh I- abs- yes so i was just very fortunate to get when i was first starting obviously zero clients like mm-hmm. nothing and yeah. the company i work for they're called uh fitness friend they're amazing they got I me and my clients friends shout out for this one. They got me, um, all of my like equipment and stuff and they get me like my clients and everything. So, uh, I literally would just take whatever clients came my way at first. Cause I had zero and I was like, I need money. I wasn't working at the time. So I was like, I need money. Been so there. I'm taking every single client that I can. And then I have like, I have my clients built. I have like 10 sessions a week now. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like, sorry, I make a little bit of money. This yeah. is great, but they're a little more sporadic. Well, each client that came in after that, I got to like play some like, okay, you can go Tuesday at noon because I have someone at like 1030. So then 30 minutes after that, you can be there. So yeah, yeah, it's, it was hard at first, but now since I am so full, yeah, it's nice to have that leisure because I would never felt pressured. Like, again, I know how fortunate it is that I got filled so fast. I, I had 20 clients within the first like five, six months that I was doing this. So wow, that's really impressive. Dang. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, but now that I just get to pick like the times that people get to go, it, it's yeah. really nice. And if someone wants to train, but they can't train with me, I'll throw them at another trainer and be like, Hey, this person wants to get a like workout in. And mm-hmm. the other trainers are really great guys and well, lady too. But, yeah. uh, yeah, so it's just it's nice to have that flexibility and know that I have some other really good trainers that I can throw a client off on if 
the time mm-hmm. doesn't work out because I'm really big at protecting my time. Last year, I kind of was like, Hey, whenever the clients want to go, we'll do it. I'd like yep. need to start somehow. But like now this year, I'm really trying to protect my time and like realize, Oh, I don't want to get off at seven o'clock every single night. So yeah, that the, the hardest part about coaching is that, you know, people work out when they don't work. So like yeah. the work day of a trainer is pretty much the opposite of a nine to five. Um, yep. You can get really taxing. Like in, in undergrad, I would, you know, there were, you know, several days a week where I'd go in at five, five thirty AM coach a class and then a, a client, then go mm-hmm. you know, to campus, go to class, come back, coach a, you know, a client around lunch uh-huh. to school and then come back for the oh. afternoon sessions. And it was just like uh, brutal for a while. So yeah, yeah dude. Imagine, you know, having to be at a different location for each of those sessions uh-huh. just makes it even harder. I was yes. going to ask, once you have a client, are they usually, you know, in it for the long haul? Because I know when you're coaching at a gym, uh, at least at my gym, we sold training sessions in like packages, typically of 10. So people mm-hmm. would kind of swipe their card, pay for 10 sessions. You'd have that. And then you would kind of re-up, you know, after mm-hmm. that month or however long it took to get through those sessions. So um, do do you sell training packages similar to that? Or are people just like, you know, paying by month by session. Mm -hmm. So we do, we have a thing where it's like six sessions for the price of three. We also do like the first session for free for everyone. Um, That's huge. Yeah. That's because so many people are scared to like start with a personal trainer and that's, it's not necessarily always the money. Like, yeah, sometimes it is, but um, sometimes they're just scared and intimidated to have a personal trainer. So we offer um, a free first session and I feel like that makes just people more comfortable. They're like, Hey, these people want to make sure that like we're comfortable. We're going through a good workout and that they like it. So um, we do offer like a f- five or six sessions for like two or three, but all of my clients, let's say I've had 20 clients, like since I started like a year ago, um, only two of them have dropped. I've had everyone else for the long haul. Wow. And the yeah, other two that dropped, they call me like once a month, once every other month. And I go over and like, they might get a new piece of equipment. They just want me to teach them how to use it. Or they're just like, Hey, like I have free time. You want to do a workout today? And they're not in my schedule, but if I can fit them in, like, why not? Yeah. I'd love to. Yeah, no, that's actually, yeah, no, that makes a ton of sense. Cause I think like, like you said at the very beginning, um, not a lot of people cancel because it's not like they have to go anywhere. Like, yeah, I guess in, in a way, there's no way there's nowhere for your clients to hide. Right. Like exactly. Like if, if, if they're on your schedule, you're, you're going to be banging down their door. That's um, right. Wow. Yeah. That's really funny. So, okay. You, you have all these athletes, you know, you, you have anywhere from youth to professional to, you know, I guess, older general population just who Mm -hmm. doesn't want their back to hurt um what what are some like the big differences that you do because i know you have to you know probably in the car ride over from client to client you're probably kind of flipping a switch um in the way that you communicate the movements the way that you write the workouts the intensity of the session so uh are those big differences from you know client to client or are, are are you pretty you know uniform across the board how does that work for it varies quite a bit. So yeah. it, it is pretty different between clients. So my younger athletes, um, the biggest thing I try to get out of them is show them that they can push their body like further than they know they can. So like when I teach the high schoolers how to like sprint. So in baseball, you run the 60 yard, like that's the from first to, or from home plate to second, that's 60 yards. So that's what you run as a baseball player. And I like showing them that they can just push their body so much harder. Like when you're running, like they can get so much more out of what they're doing. Like, just like I work on like explosiveness drills with them. Like we'll do like med ball tosses, slams, all type of stuff like that. But then I could go to my next session and it could be 75 year old dude that's retired and just likes to play golf all the time with back issues. And obviously I have like, he doesn't want me going there yelling at him and have given him an intense workout. Like he wants to go in there, get a little sweat on, but protect his back. So yeah, just, it is you know, different. Check the, I worked out today box. Exactly. Exactly. But it's my job to make sure that he does a workout that he'll stay with. Like if I push him too hard, 
he won't want to come back the next week. Mm -hmm. But if I don't push him hard enough, then that's a useless session and I'm just stealing the guy's money. So I feel like that's where I have to step in with like the expertise of like finding that correct balance and that right line of like, okay, like I'm going to put you through a workout. It's going to be good. You're going to work, but it's not going to be over where he's comfortable being because that's what it is. A lot of, um, not to go off on a tangent here or anything, but um, there's no one workout plan that'll work for everyone. So yeah, yeah, absolutely love the idea, like 75 hard, not talking crap on it. Love that idea, but it's for a certain people. Like, Dan, that's, you can do 75 hard. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get a 45 year old dad that doesn't never worked out to work out twice a day for 75 days. Like, You got to, you got to pace it, you know, like a lot of my clients never worked out and they're retired now and they just want to make sure that they stay in shape so they can go play golf. So I'm not going to have them work out twice a day, you know, like right. I'm going to cater it to them and their needs and what's going to help them. But also I'm going to make sure that, you know, it, it's a workout that they'll continue to do. Yeah. It, it's actually really funny you bring that up because like one or two podcasts ago, uh, we, we talked about 75 hard and pretty much said the same thing. Like, sure. You know, it's a, it's a good challenge if you really need a challenge, but you know, I, I actually tried it one time and I got like halfway through, like maybe like a month in, uh-huh. uh, maybe not quite halfway. And it wasn't like, it wasn't necessarily like too hard. It's not like I, you know, physically couldn't do it, but I kind of realized that it just did not line up with my goals. My my goals at the time I was competing in, you know, Olympic lifting, which those sessions mm-hmm. are, you know, you know, max efforts and they're longer sessions, an hour and a half. So it's yeah. like I had to cut out time for that. And then also find another workout that, you know, I'd go into my next, you know, competition training session mm-hmm. and feel exhausted. And, you know, I was very judgmental about the way I was eating. And then I, you know, I kind of figured you know, this is not sustainable. And, you know, the, the whole point of the challenge is it's not supposed to be sustainable, yeah. but, you know, to me, it's my time was better spent finding a, a sustainable routine, a sustainable, you know, structure in my fitness schedule, things uh-huh. like that. So, um, yeah, I think it's funny, funny you bring that up because it's, it's a funny, very, it's a very good example of, I guess, the importance of being real with yourself and that, you know, you got to find something that you can stick with for the long haul. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because guys like us, like we've been working out for so long and like being in shape and working out, like that's part of our life. Like we just like, Hey, I didn't work out today. Like I'm thinking about like, Hey, might go to the gym today. You know, some people, not everyone thinks like that. So like just, I don't know, for someone to go from nothing to start working out, it's the, if they have a trainer, I think it's their job to help guide them to like show them that like working out can be sustainable. Absolutely. Yeah. So we, we got like seven minutes left and then the free version of Zoom is going to cut us off. But uh, <laughs> I, I was going to ask about your, your own, you know, training, because, you know, if you have a full week of that's 27 hours, you're spending just coaching, you know, mm-hmm. plus all the travel time. And I know you have, friends and a life and you up you have other hobbies so what's your what's your fitness routine like how do you balance it um yeah so my um i do a couple different things one i stretch with all my clients so when i go to the gym i don't spend a ton of time stretching because i literally get down and i stretch with all of my clients like some clients i can't because i have to like be there help them out like and stretch and stuff but i stretch with all that so when I go to the gym, I don't need to be there for even an hour. So I'll go in there. Uh, let's say I have an hour and a half bet- from like one client to another, and they're only five minutes away from each other. I'll go to the gym. I'll go to the gym. I'll take a shower at the gym. And like, I'll be there for an hour, work out hard for 40 minutes, then 20 minutes, catch my bearings and then go to the next client's house. So in the middle of the day is when I really like to work out. Um, my, <laughs> my girlfriend's a psycho and likes to wake up at 4 a.m. So I woke up with her the other day and we worked out. So I'll I'll be doing that a few times, but, um, and then on Fridays I work out with one of my clients. They just, some, some of the clients just want me to put them through a great workout, but they like when I work out with them because it kind of pushes them to like, and normally I wouldn't want to, 
Yeah. But like, they're really at like, and it's not the whole workout sometimes. Like I do like planks with most of my clients also just because okay, it's yeah. easier to do a plank with someone, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'll fit it in, in the middle of the day. Sometimes since I make my own schedule, like some days I'll be off by one o'clock. So I'll start at like seven, finish at one. And then I get to do my workout, go hit some golf balls after, and I'm still home by three. So that's nice. Um, yeah, I, I, I go hard. Um, I'm more into right now in my, I'm kind of lifting a little heavier than I yeah. normally do, but uh, I, I go in cycles, but yeah, I'm, I'm there for 40 minutes. I don't spend a long time at the gym just because I'm training all day and I, I don't, uh, it's not that I'm sick of it, but I kind of, I'm like, yeah. I am. Well, and, like, and, and you're, you're on your feet all day is, yeah. is a huge thing um, that I definitely noticed this year when I made the transition from, you know, being a coach, you know, I was still like an undergrad doing classes, but a good chunk of my day, I was on my feet, you know, running yeah. around, had a group of kids and then some, you know, one-on-ones with adults and stuff like that. You know, you're re-racking weights, you're yeah. demonstrating stuff. And then oh. now I sit in this chair for like 12 hours a day. Um, yeah. So, so you no, know, I, I definitely think there's a lot of value in having a job where you're on your feet because, you know, you can afford to just, you know, get a quick 30 minute workout in. Oh, yeah. Everything else surrounding that workout on your feet throughout the day, you know, kind of makes up for that short session. The, the Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like when I'm training my, uh, like baseball guys, I'll be like tossing med balls with them. Like I'm involved with their workouts. So if I have five sessions and I trained out, like my, I trained my, uh, like pro dudes yeah. that I might not work out that day because yeah. I, I might've walked literally 25,000 steps. I insert just, an absurd amount of like energy export. So I, yeah, yeah no, I mean, how many, days thing about, how many days do you typically lift? So that's more of a, a do as I say, not as I do thing, because last week I literally worked out two or three times. I try to work out five to six times, but um, just where I am in life, like it gives yeah. me, I, I feel like I get great. I move a lot, but uh, I was just, I was so tired last week. So I only worked out two times, but I would say I only work out five times a week, sometimes even six, but like never seven times. It's good to listen to your body though. I, I've, I've, uh, I've been off the rails these last couple of weeks too. I, yeah. I usually try to go um, four times a week. What, what I actually do, um, I plan to do four sessions in, in the gym and then mm-hmm. I always write a 30 minute home body weight workout as part nice. of my actual program. Because that way it's like, if I have a, you know, tough week with exams and things like that. And I just like, don't have the mental energy or the time to get in the gym. At Mm -hmm. least I have, you know, 30 minutes, no equipment. I can just do it right here in my living room. Like it's almost like an accountability thing for me. So absolutely. uh, Yeah. But yeah, it's good to listen to your body and every now and then if if you're going two times, it's still good. So yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And you got to, you have to appreciate that too. Like my body has done so much for me. Like I, I can remember the days when I'm worked out nine times a week or the weeks where I worked out nine times a week. And like, it allowed me to play baseball. My like, I love yeah. my body. So like, it, you got to listen to it. Like, yeah. Has, has your mindset with your own workouts changed since you were, you know, playing professional ball versus now, or, or have you always been pretty dialed in wanting to, I've always heavy? been, I've always been pretty dialed in ready to lift heavy, but, um, I think now being like, if I don't work, I don't get paid money. Like now I'm a little more conscious about like getting hurt and stuff like that. So I try to really protect myself. Like when I was an athlete, man, I was, I was throwing as much weight around as I can, didn't need too much of a warm up. So now I make sure I'm like warmed up. Like I know I stretch with my clients so much. So it it's changed a little bit, but now I'm just more careful about, hurting myself like same thing evan wanted to race the other day when he was home and obviously i'd whoop that kid's butt and race it, but <laughs> I, I didn't want to do it because we didn't stretch we had like sandals on and he was like dude come on i'm like if i get hurt i don't get paid for the week so yeah i can't do if that. i get hurt it's on you yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> all right sure. hey man i really appreciate you uh taking the time on on your weekend to sit down and talk to me i like i said i i was really excited for this because you do have a very unique job. Again, I don't think a lot of people know about it. So Mm -hmm. uh, if we can just, you know, get this podcast out to someone who's considering hiring a trainer, um, but might, you know, for any reason, not want to go to a gym because they're 
crowded because they're, you know, maybe self-conscious gym anxiety is definitely a real thing. So oh, for sure. Uh, no, I think what, what's your company called fitness friends. Yeah. Fitness friend wellness. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I think companies like that amazing option that I think more people should know about for sure. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. All right, man. Well, hey, let's uh, let's maybe do this again sometime. And thanks again for chatting. Bro, you just you give me the word. I'm there. For sure. Thanks, man. All right. Later, Dan. So that will conclude this week's episode. Main takeaway is if you're thinking about hiring a personal trainer to help you stay accountable with fitness, just know that there are more options than just going to your local commercial gym and finding a trainer there. If you're in the St. Louis area, Nate's company again is called Fitness Friend Wellness. But if you're somewhere else, I'm sure there are similar options near you. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel on whatever platform you're currently listening to this on, and let us know your thoughts. I always like to end our podcast by reminding you that in addition to providing you with information about getting into or getting consistent with fitness, we also offer many services to help you do so. If you're interested in a simple, time-efficient, minimal effective dose strength and conditioning program, you can start your seven-day free trial on any of our six different Team Vitality subscriptions today. Team Vitality is split up into two tracks, the essentials and true potential. The only real difference is that true potential uses big barbell lifts like bench presses, squats, and deadlifts, and the essentials uses similar movement patterns just without the barbell. Regardless of the track, there are four-day three-day, and two-day-a-week options depending on how often you can or want to go to the gym. I've personally been using the True Potential four-day-a-week program since starting medical school, and honestly, it's been so nice having all of my workouts pre-planned to help me stay accountable. Plus, I feel stronger and healthier than ever while spending probably the least amount of time I've ever spent in the gym. For more information, check out our website, fitnessremodel.com, and we will see you next week.